Dark rolling. Okay, ready? Yep. Lovely. Okay, well, hello, Gary. Uh, firstly, um, how would you describe yourself as a filmmaker? What's unique about you as a storyteller, do you think? Um, I would describe myself as a kind of tragic writer, um, but relating in a real world sense. Um, I don't believe in kind of making um, happy stories with happy endings because that's not how real world is, especially from like my own personal experience. Um, when I'm telling stories and my script writing, I always like to prioritize, um, sorry, I always like to um, prioritize the re relatableness of the actual piece rather than just main characters. My characters may represent um, different themes such as like feminism, um, <clears throat> oppression um, of like women in the real world and especially like in the industry. Um, but yeah, I like to kind of um, use my stories as a note for real world experiences. Lovely. Uh, so, can you tell me why you so you, you mentioned that your storytelling enables you to reflect real world experiences? Is that why the creative industries are so important? And is it really important today more than ever before for you? Yeah, I believe um, storytelling for the real world today um, is a perfect outlet to represent what uh, current societal issues. Um, art has always been a um, tool for representing um, stories um, from far lands such as like the wars going on it would be used to show everyone like kind of what happened during that to um, note what like historical points are to present um, these characters that have happened in our history so I believe today um, storytelling is such a focal point um, in society. It's our mainstream go-to, especially social media. People are telling their own stories by vlogging their experiences today, um, showing that world and also how it has been kind of manipulated into what we do and don't believe. So I think, again, storytelling is very powerful in that sense. And where did your personal love of storytelling come from? What, what, what were your first steps into the world of filmmaking? I remember my first story that I wrote that kind of made me go, oh, I'm actually quite good at this and I find it fun. I was in year three writing a story about um, a two fairy and two sisters going on a journey um, through that and learning the history of like teeth and how all that sort of works. And my teacher said, oh, we haven't had anything like this before. I thought, okay. I want to keep exploring that and that grew and grew into more short stories and then I always thought oh I would want to be a book writer um, even despite my dyslexia which has always been a bit of a challenge with writing I'll be able to know what's going on in my head but through writing I've quickly um, built the skills of actually being able to put whatever's in my mind onto paper and that's how I've explained these stories to other people so that's been a challenge that I've overcome. So again, like writing has been an outlet for me to be able to express what's going on um, inside my busy head onto paper. And then I thought, oh, cameras exist now, sort of things. And how much I did enjoy watching TVs and films um, as a kid. So putting that to camera just opened a whole new world for me. And I haven't looked back since. What do you particularly enjoy about the production process, about the actual the mechanics of making a film or writing a script? What, what are the key pleasures for you in making a film? So um, I do like the producing side, so the planning and kind of making, knowing how to make the piece possible. Um, I do have um, dual kind of interests. I have interests in live filmmaking as well as storytelling. Um, storytelling was the thing that got me into filmmaking and actually from joining Lippo in my course and volunteering for what I thought was going to be a couple of tubes ended up being a whole side career. Very unpaid work, but I've enjoyed it 100%. Um, so I think the stuff that I do enjoy is in the live filmmaking, I enjoy how it's in the moment, you have to get it done straight away. There's of course the pre-planning, which then makes everything so much easier which then links back to the filmmaking of being able to write the script and kind of set in the foundations and actually being able to give it off to someone to say like, oh, um, here's my ideas. I want to see where you go with it. It's quite nice to also see how people interpret that because if you just hold a story to yourself and it's like, no, this is how it needs to be, 
it kind of defeats the purpose of storytelling because it's meant to be interpreted. Uh, so you've been studying f- uh, filmmaking, you've been doing your, your live broadcasts for a few years now. Have you kind of learned anything over the last few years that have, have been particularly beneficial to you? What haven't I learned over these past three years? Um, I've learned, of course, like the different types of narrative structures. I've learned all these different movements, um, feminism, of course, and I think understanding the history of um, filmmaking, and especially like how women have contributed to it, how women have been impressed by it. That's very important to know where we've been, to know where we are and see how far we can still keep going. Like under- hearing um, these, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened, to then be like, oh, it still happens. Until that second part is gone, I don't think we have um, progressed far enough. So I'm excited to see like where the industry goes. So what types of content do you typically produce? And you mentioned your live broadcasts there. Mm-hmm. What other forms of storytelling do you engage with? theatre, film, television, and why is that form particularly important? Um, Yeah, so I have made a lot of um, live TV, but I've also been able to collaborate that with um, my script writing storytelling. Um, A piece that I made last year, Next in Line, that was a theatre piece that originally was going to be a five person script, but due to like story, uh, due to um, some timeline things, it got minimalized to a one woman show, which I still think was absolutely fantastic. Um, Through that experience, I quickly learned um, how to do lighting cues. I learned um, the TV studio, like little nicks and tricks, um, how to camera operate and the vision mixing. So I was able to collaborate my live TV with the producing of storytelling. Um, Having created lots of different work over the last couple of years, are there any recurring elements or recurring themes that come up in all the films you make or the the plays that you write? I think within the pieces that I've made throughout my time in Lippa, I've definitely focused and honed in on um, feminism and also kind of like the repression, um, the sort of how women have been oppressed, maybe not in the most obvious way, Um, but how it actually has the toll on the female characters um, can be small to then um, they quickly react and the destruction around them actually reflects the destruction of their mental health because of it. So your work particularly taps into the ways in which women have been treated by a quite an oppressive world. So you see your work as being reflecting the female experience? Yes, of course, yeah. Sorry, I'll keep telling that. Uh, so, um, tell me about your influences then, Kerry. Uh, who's been a, a, an influence on your work and why is their particular films or their TV shows so meaningful to you? Um, I would say my main inspiration is Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is a jack of all trades. She's a writer, director, actor, producer. Um, some of her work, uh, Killing Eve, has um, definitely put a not, definitely struck um, the British and American um, audiences to showing these amazing empowered female characters that of course they're like uh, um, Villanelle is known for being a absolute murderer psycho killer but we love to like hate her kind of thing um, we see her in her most highs and like most lows and we're still always rooting for her, no matter her flaws. So it's kind of like, in a way, seeing a forgivable character by understanding their past, I find that is quite a big inspiration. What about, um, uh, have there been any film movements or film styles that you've drawn inspiration from? When I'm creating a piece, I do find inspiration from um, French New Wave. Um, in their style of the fast editing, how it's quite unconventional. In a sense, it does draw you in um, through their characters. However, the fast cutting and the actual styles of um, the camera movement, it kind of takes you back to realise that this is a piece. Um, Some other um, practitioners, such as Brecht, a theatre practitioner, I find inspiration from him because he's, in a way, drawing the audience out to both bond with the characters and the narrative, but still keep in mind that this is meant to be a thought piece. You're meant to think about it. And I find that inspirational, especially um, putting it into my pieces of having the audience think about the actual issues 
um, as well as being able to bond with the narrative. So your work tends to explore the constructed, the social construction of gender roles or gender hierarchies. The society says that men are above women, but that's all a social construct. So do you find that you, you use filmmaking techniques or you're influenced by French New Wave cinema because it's all about looking at construction, about how things are constructed? I think that within my pieces, um, I do think about um, how they are constructed and how the audience can also interpret them. Um, I believe that actually when you do use unconventional um, techniques, it makes the audience think more. Of course, um, a lot of my target audiences are those that are interested in the film, but also those um, that seek the new, that seek new ways of entertainment. Um, I've explored live theatre through multi-camera. Uh, multi I'm currently working on a piece that can be adapted into uh, main so social media by using a montage, by also using voiceovers, and uh, in a way not showing who the actual characters are. Again, you're meant to hear the voice and almost um, perceive yourself in it. So you're currently working on a number of different projects, including your ind uh, your individual specialist project. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit more about that? What uh, what what have you produced, uh, and why did you want to make this particular film for? So my piece, um, my indiv individual specialist project, um, is called "We Only Talk in Crisis," and it features two characters um, coming together to talk about their personal issues um, regularly. They then realise what they're doing isn't natural. It's something that is should be done by a therapist rather than burdening someone with a lot of information. Um, and within that, I plan to make a um, exhibition or like experience using soundscape by also using projection, again, using unconventional um, storytelling ways to create an experience of narrative rather than just focusing on characters themselves. Lovely. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about the themes that you're exploring mm -hmm. in your RSP and why it's so important to look at these themes now? Uh, and importantly, how are you going to make sure your audience take away your intended meaning from the text? So a key part of my ISP is um, I'm using point of view um, cinematography, similar to that scene in Peep Show, which I do think was um, a, a series way before its time. It didn't really kick off right. A lot of interpretations of the point of view um, was probably misconstrued. However, I interpret to use the point of view um, cinematography to actually put the audience in the character's shoes and in a way hear what they're saying. A key theme within uh, my piece is kind of like memory and interpretation as well as boundaries. Um, by putting the character, by putting the audience actually in the character's shoes, they are forced to believe what the character is saying when they're reflecting on a memory. But when a memory is shared, there's always two points of view. Um, so then when they're put into the other character's shoe, they're then given that conflict of, oh, who do I believe? Um, what am I meant yeah what am I meant to think and I think that is something that we can all kind of relate to where it's like no she said this no she said that um yeah lovely so you're kind of exploring the uh, the unreliability of memory and the ways in which we all have different perspectives on the world yeah is that something uh, in, is that does that say something about the current climate about the current world in which we live I do believe that issues such as like memory interpretation how unreliable it is does relate to um, the current societal issues that we are experiencing today especially through social media um, there's a lot of ways that you can interpret a footage or like interpret film interpret text and of course that was originally how um, storytelling should have been told however now it's starting to i believe get into more of a toxic um, into a toxic path um, how someone can say, okay, you're now my main source of making myself feel better, so I'm going to burden you with all my problems, burden you with all my mem memories. But you're then, um, society now says, it's like, well, you have to be there for someone to listen to, or you have to have someone to talk to, or else you won't be okay. But in contrast to that, it then says, well, no, you have to... Um, like you have to be fine, you can deal with this on your own. So it's how kind of hypocritical we are starting to turn into.
Nice. So maybe thinking about your your independent specialist projects, what have you found the most rewarding about the production process itself? Uh, wh which things have you found rewarding and potentially um, obstacles you had to, you've had to overcome? I think um, the challenges that I've um, come into while making this project is timeline. It's kind of like balancing out a lot of other um, projects. Another conflict that I've had is... Um, Yes. Yeah. I think another conflict that I've had is finalizing the narrative. There are so many issues and so many topics that I could have dove into. However, it's finalizing that to be able to give platform to those particular issues rather than putting every type of issue into a narrative where it's all kind of equally treated. So wanting to highlight um, issues that I believe are relevant within the piece. Um, some exciting things that I've done is I have found it quite fun to do the POV. Um, filmmaking. Um, for me, I'm quite a short person, so sticking a camera right in front of my face and then hobbling along kind of like an NPC character in a movie or um, in a in a game, that's been quite fun and interesting. And exploring locations around Liverpool has been very fun because it is very... Um, Liverpool itself is quite a hometown for me now. I've very much adopted into it. And um especially your independent specialist project, you're working with a number of different people uh, and filmmaking and storytelling is very much a collaborative process. Can you tell me about whether you find the collaborative process rewarding? I find collaborating with other people extremely rewarding. Um, you can work with someone on one show, remember their name and especially if you've worked very well together, you now have someone to go to for other projects. Um, from volunteering on Tube, I've met a number of sound techs, lighting techs, management students. I've basically met them all, so now I have a variety of connections for other projects. And in, um, and the other side of that is that I do get approached for a lot of the filmmaking um, side of production. It's like, oh, we need uh, someone to do a camera real quick because we want to perform a set. Can you do that? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. Um, I do really enjoy collaboration. It's I think it's very rewarding. Uh, so you've made a number of different projects, films and live productions over the past few years. Which ones have you found particularly meaningful and why? I think I found, I think I found Tube as the most rewarding um, projects that I've been working on. Um, at the beginning of my experience in Lipper, I started out just as sticking an SD card in a very old type of camera and press and play and sh uh, point in it now and then. Um, but now, last year, I was basically one of the lead producers in creating it. I organized it. I was the key um, contact for all the vision team. I got to collaborate with everyone on my course um, because of it. And then when, as soon as I turned all the machines off and I had that exhale of, oh, it's done, it was both like euphoric, but also felt very sad that it was all over for another year. Um, although it's very tiring and a lot of like physical hard and like mental work, it's one of those that it it's just a pure adrenaline rush and can't get enough of it. So you've done lots of different things over the past few years. Has there been anything that you've done at Lipper that's going to particularly help you in the filmmaking world as a professional storyteller, do you think? Um, I do believe that um, when I was creating Next in Line, it it when I was creating um, Next in Line, um, my live vision mixing um, theatre piece, it collaborated every type of storytelling that I do enjoy. Um, the live filmmaking of it, being able to create an actual product of it to then be able to put it out into the industry, um, that I felt like that was very rewarding as well as the actual storytelling of it. Um, a lot of hiccups happen along the way so my quick versatile skills um, kicked in to be able to go okay that's not working let's quickly drop that and move on to something else so for me to be able to go from a scriptwriter to then setting up um, the lights the cameras I felt like that um, utilized all my versatility skills. Lovely uh, and do you have any upcoming projects or productions and why are you making them? So me and I'm collaborating with the fellow student Emily Smith on our project six uh, module. That's going to be a, um, what's the word? 
it's going to be a montage short film with um, narrative um, or voiceovers to kind of showcase the three types of relationships that we all experience, um, difficulties in familiar, um, in situationships, and then also self-love. I feel very excited to be working on that project because it's almost a homage to all the experiences that we've been going through um, since we started um, Lipper and how we've evolved as ourselves. That's kind of shown through the self-love, uh, the difficulties um, we've had in relationships. That's the other two um, voiceovers. Um, I think, yeah, it's something that I'm excited for because it's kind of a final conclusion and a homage to everything that we've been working on since we started Lipper. And my final question then, Kerry, is... In your opinion, what's the most important or uh, or the, the important issues or concerns within the creative industries and how might these be overcome, do you think? I think some things that I've personally experienced is, of course, kind of like un uh, people have undermined me um, a lot of the time, um, possibly because I am um, a woman in a very male-dominated live industry. Um, although I've... Uh, been able to have like such big connections there is always that obvious slight difference um however from actually applying to other jobs as well as um seeing lipper and their ratio of uh, male to female i'm quite optimistic that this is actually progressing especially seeing women actually in the industry um more diverse that you have the more inspiration that is and i hope to one day be part of that 